Hey guys, Smooth Terrorist here back again. I told you I was going to be making a ton of videos lately, and I was not kidding. Um, and this one's going to be quite a doozy because I have been doing a little bit of trolling. Um, and I've got a, a nice little debate to share with you guys. Now, why have I been doing some trolling? Um, I'm going to tell you the reason why. I have got a very... I, I, I've got three friends in the military at this point, but one of my closest and best friends, and, and by the way, like one of the best people I know, a guy who you may know as Fail Card, just recently joined the U.S. Air Force. And, um, let me, let me tell you a little quick anecdote, just to give you a rough sketch composite of what kind of person Fail Card is. When Fail Card was in high school, he once drew a hammer and sickle on his uh, book binder, and uh, he got sent to the principal's office. And the principal was like, do you think it's okay to be walking around with that symbol on, on, on your book binder? And he's like, well, yeah, I have the freedom to, to draw whatever I want. Why, why shouldn't I be able to have this? And the principal said, well, do you know anything about who Joseph Stalin is, and do you know anything about the kind of uh, repression that went on in the Soviet Union? And, uh, and Failcard was like, well, how do you know that they're so bad? Have you ever been to Russia? You know, you've just been told what, you know. And, and this, this is coming from a high school kid, by the way. I don't think I was that much of an independent thinker when I was in high school, so, you know, just, just to give you an idea of what kind of person he is, that's the kind of person he is. But, nicest guy in the world, I, I mean, he, I've, I've literally seen him, well, not literally, but, like, I've, I've seen him pretty much give the shirt off his back to people and, and, and just bend over backwards to help somebody in need. So, really great guy, really independent thinker, and... It broke my heart when he fucking joined the Air Force. It did. I didn't want to tell him that, because uh, I wanted to support his decision and be a good friend and be like, hey, if this is what you think is right for you, then, you know, go ahead. Um, but, you know, what, what really kills me is I told him when he was joining, I was like, look, I think you'd do great in anything you do in life. I don't think you have anything to prove. So, you know, and he has a military tradition in his family, so I think he kind of felt like, it, you know, he had to do the do the family proud and all that. Um, and y you know, and, and by the way, one of the reasons he's joining is 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 to uh, help somebody else who's in dire financial straits. Who I'm, I'm not going to say who it is, and it isn't me, by the way. But he's he's helping he's helping people that he you know he's doing this to help other people. It's not selfish motivations like like he's doing it for for. Uh, the fat pension or, or, or to get through college or whatever the hell. He's doing this to help people. And, you know, I told him, look, um, I really wish you weren't doing this, and my biggest fear is that you're going to become indoctrinated and become a mindless robot who I can't identify with anymore, and you're going to stop being this awesome person that you are that I'm friends with. And he said, and, 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 and this is what kills me. What kills me is that when he got done with boot camp, which is only like a, a three-month thing, I think, um, you know, he, 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 uh, he called me when he got done with basic military training, and he said, hey, I, look, I'm still the same person. I haven't turned into a robot or anything like that. And it, it, my heart sank when he said, because I, I was like, oh, my God, he doesn't get it. It's, it's, this doesn't happen overnight. It's not like you get through boot camp and, and, and you're the fucking Manchurian candidate. It takes a little bit of time. You know, you, you become indoctrinated in the culture. You become sucked into the culture. Um, and, you, you know, they beat it into your head 24-7 that civilians are lazy, undisciplined maggots, and civilians suck, and we're so much better. Uh, women are fucking weak, and, 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 you know, you guys know what the military does. I don't have to explain this shit. Um, well, lately, um, he's, he's been doing really well. He, he got through, um, he got through the, the tech school training for, for the, the, uh, um, mil the, uh, MOS, I guess, that he's gonna take. Um, and, and he's about ready to go to where his actual work is gonna take place. And, um, and by the way, he's in a support role, not a combat role, obviously. Um, you know, he's assured me many times that if an order comes down for him to have to kill an innocent person, he's not going to do it. And I'm like, well, that doesn't exactly reassure me, because that means you might be the one that gets killed, but, you know, whatever. Um, 
you know, his reply to that was to say that if, if I ever find myself on a battlefield in Afghanistan, I'll just shout no shooty vaxies. And, and it's, it's, you know, he, he made a joke out of it. Um, which is really not a joke to me. Anyway, though, um, you know, he's, 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 uh, he's doing great, but he told me recently that he regrets joining, and that if he had the choice to do it over again, he would not join, he would not enlist. And the reason why is because he's starting to realize that he took for granted what you and I and everybody else have, which is his freedom. He, he took for granted the ability to wake up in the morning and just decide what you're going to do that day. Maybe I'll go here, maybe I'll go there, maybe I'll just stay in bed and, and, and fucking do whatever. Um, you know, he, he, that's, that's not his life anymore. Now he's a tool. Now he is United States government property. And he has to do what the fuck he's told. And it's, it's bumming him out. It's depressing him, naturally. Um... So I said, I said to him, well, why don't you just leave? If, if you fucking hate it like this, why don't you just leave? You're still within the first 180 days, so you don't have to get a dishonorable discharge or anything like that. Or, or, or you know, a, a, a general discharge. You know, you know, you could still get that early leave uh, thing. And he's like, uh, well, I've already achieved so much. I've been through so much, and it was so hard that, you know, I'm not, you know. So in other words, he's trapped. He's, he's indoctrinated in the culture now. They, they got him. They hooked him. He's in. He's in probably for life. Um, and, you know, I've been thinking about my friend, uh, Failcard, and I ran across a video by Adam Kokesh uh, of Adam vs. the Man fame, who, if you guys don't know who this, this guy is, he's a combat veteran, Marine, who served in Iraq. He, he was in Fallujah. And he was the founder of Iraq Veterans Against the War. He's also a big time uh, Randroid. You, you, you know, he's he's all about the free market, uh, volunteerism, Ron Paul, Ayn Rand, bull, bull crap. You know, you know these guys. You know these fucking libertarians. They're a dime a dozen. Um, but I, I still I still kind of respect Adam Kokesh because unlike most libertarians. He's a big believer in direct action, and this guy is always constantly out there violating unjust laws and, and filming himself doing it. Like, for example, if there's some little obscure uh, footloose-style county somewhere that has, like, a, a, a law in the books that men are not allowed to wear Speedos on the beach or because it's indecency or something, then he'll wear a Speedo on the beach and get himself arrested. Or if there's a law, like, for example, in the uh, Capitol Mall that you're not allowed to dance at the uh, Jefferson Memorial, then he goes to the Jefferson Memorial and dances and gets himself arrested. Which, you know, I, I love that kind of civil disobedience, direct action type shit. And it gives me a lot of respect for him, despite the fact that he's a randroid. Anyway... So I found this Adam Kokesh video called Should You Join the Military? And he made this video because he got an email from one of his fans who's 16 years old asking him if, if he thinks that, that he should join the military. And Adam Kokesh, you know, to give you the Cliff's Notes version, and, because I don't have a lot of time, uh, he basically said, no, don't join the military. It's really, you know, if you believe in voluntarism, then it's kind of indefensible. Uh, just, just don't do it. Um, and I decided to do a little bit of trolling because I'm kind of angry about what happened to my friend and the situation that he's in. And I left this comment, and I'm going to read the comment that I left. I said, let's face it, if you're in the military, you are a welfare queen. You, s you get to sit around playing World of Warcraft and high-fiving your buddies on the taxpayer's dime while providing nothing of value to American society. Thank God for our brave men in uniform, or else we'd all be speaking Iraqi, right? <laughs> and, you know, Sarah Han 6 and a couple other people are going to recognize that I ripped that last part off from uh, 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 Doug Stanhope. But, you, you, you know... Well, fair queen, do I really talk like that? No, I don't say stuff. You know, I don't have any problem with people taking advantage of social programs that they need. You know, welfare queen, whatever. Uh, of all the uses that my tax dollars are put to, welfare is probably the one that pisses me off the least. 
I, I, I really, you know, that's... But, I, I mean, I understand that the people who watch Adam Kokesh videos, many of which are in the military and big Ron Paul guys, y y you know, nothing fucking burns them more than the idea of anyone getting help with anything. So, I, 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 tr I was trolling. I was trolling. And I landed a, a big fucking bass. I, I landed a big fucking mackerel. Um... Because I went to my channel comments the next day, and there was this comment on my channel by a guy called The Silent Carnage, and this is what he says. He says, You made a comment saying that the ones in the military are living off the people's dime, welfare queens, giving their buddies high fives and just sitting around. Seriously? You may not agree with the current movements of the military, but you sound like the military is not necessary in the first place. Make a video explaining this and send it to me. I'd like to hear your response. So this guy thinks he can give me orders. Well, I uh, responded on my channel comments to what he said, and th this is what I responded with. I said, I said, the military isn't necessary. Costa Rica constitutionally abolished their military, and now they have one of the highest standards of living in the world, with 95% literacy rates and much longer life expectancy than the United States. The only justification for the military is to defend against the militaries of other sovereign nations, and even that is a very weak argument, especially now that the level of economic interdependence and global communication is making the concept of national sovereignty obsolete. You didn't serve your country in Iraq, you served elite special interests. I'm an American citizen, and I'm starving and have no access to health care. Why don't you serve me for a change instead of Wall Street? I would stand at the front of the Veterans Day Parade if servicemen started defending the Constitution and the people instead of behaving, in the words of Major General Smedley Butler, like gangsters for capitalism. And now you will have to wait for my uh, slow internet connection while I get the next message here and, and just bear with me for a moment. In the old days I would have edited this pause out but I no longer have the ability to do that because I'm recording videos with my phone. So, okay, here's, so I, I sent this guy a message and I said, I replied to your comment on my channel, in case you didn't know, because I found it kind of late. I said, sorry for the late reply, I didn't see it until today. By the way, you should know that I have three very close friends in the active duty military, two in the United States Air Force and one in the Army. And I don't think soldiers are bad people or anything like that, but I don't think that the military should exist. It hurts the country more than it helps. If you doubt that, just watch the footage from the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. I saw active duty soldiers and reservists telling news reporters that they'd be more than willing to shoot American citizens in order to maintain order in the streets. And where do you think those orders originated from? Because you could bet your ass it wasn't Congress. If your loyalty is really to the people, then do what is best for the people. It really is that simple. Okay, and then... I got a message back from him, and this is what he says. He says... He says, Smooth Terrorist. First of all, I hope that you had a good day and a good weekend so far, which I did. I appreciate your reply, but I have a hard time thinking you actually do not think the military should exist. I was in Iraq at the time of Katrina. I would have been happy to go back to America to assist the recovery efforts in any way that I could. The recovery, by the way, let me pause. The recovery efforts, right? It, it had nothing to do with continuity of government. It was, it was, a, it was a recovery effort. But yeah, whatever. Let me continue with what he said. I was in Iraq at the time of Katrina. I would have been more than happy to go back to America and assist with the recovery efforts in any way I could. The quote saying soldiers would be happy to shoot Americans to restore order if necessary can only make me think that in order to protect themselves and equipment and warning shots would be used first, I assure you. In Iraq, the rules of engagement was thrown on us every other day. It seemed like, and every time, it reminded us how easy it would be to ruin our lives with a bad decision during our time overseas. 
No, instead you just ruin other people's lives. Okay, sorry. Every day people do not realize how we, as American soldiers, are placed under microscopes every time we went outside the wire into, um, into enemy territory. Not only were we subject to get shot or blown up, but also from our superiors for whatever they, they thought needed to be gone over. Okay. Another thing is to think if no military, yes, we are in foreign countries right now, and we need to be on our own borders. But without the military as a whole, there would have to be martial law enacted. Riots and crime would occur on a daily basis without the military. Here's a thought. Make a video on your channel and send it to me with your reply, because I actually had a hard time believing what you wrote in your reply. And like I wrote earlier, I do appreciate your answering to my comment, but the reply apparently made me take more issue with the way you think. Don't get me wrong here, you have every right to your opinions and thoughts, and I would never say otherwise, but I will always throw my two cents in when I feel necessary. All the best to you and yours, the Silent Carnage. Now, before I read my next reply to this guy, let me just point out a few things, okay? He says that, you know, yes, we are in foreign countries right now, and we need to be on our own borders. So, in other words, he wants America to be East Berlin. He wants, he wants our entire huge military to be positioned on the border. And, it, fuck, okay, he also says, he also says, without the military as a whole, there would have to be martial law enacted. Riots and crime would occur on a daily be basis without the military. Can anyone pick out the fucking mistake with that statement? Without the military, there would have to be martial law. So if you believe that the military is what's standing between between a, 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 an ordered society and one that's that's rioting constantly, that fucking is martial law. We're already there. And I think he's probably fucking right about that. But, y you know, anyway, I'm going to make this be like a two-hour video, so let me give you my next response to this guy. I'm going to give you my next response. Get ready for it. Here it comes. Here it comes. I said, I may make this into a video, actually. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> Shooting someone in self-defense is one thing, but you can't quit self-defense when you're marching down the street, breaking into people's homes, and confiscating legal firearms, which is what they were doing during the relief effort. Also, I shouldn't need to tell you how fucked up the idea of taking an American life to protect equipment is. Fuck your equipment. I don't care how expensive it is, it's not worth a life. As far as the rules of engagement are concerned, the really messed up thing about that is we treat foreigners better than our own citizens. And I can think of many examples that demonstrate this. For example, Sergeant Shamar Thomas of the, U the United States Marine Corps lost his temper with the NYPD during the Occupy Wall Street protests and started dressing them down about how they have no honor. He was too angry at the time to vocalize his thoughts very well, but later on in an interview he explained that when he was serving in Afghanistan, he and his Marines had rocks thrown at them by locals and were not allowed to simply walk into the crowd of civilians and start thumping skulls. But then he came home and saw the NYPD doing just that to American citizens who were only exercising their constitutional right of political protest and hadn't even thrown any rocks at the police. Many times I have seen CS gas used against American citizens even though its use in war is prohibited by international chemical weapons bans. A defense contractor called Raytheon invented a pain ray which uses targeted microwaves to heat the skin and cause an intense burning sensation. This weapon was actually fielded in Afghanistan, but was never used because the Pentagon knew that it would hurt the reputation of U.S. forces, and we'd never get any reliable intel or cooperation from the Afghans if we were seen by them as torturers. So instead, the pain rays were brought home for use in the California prison system. 
And I'm sure I don't need to tell you about the 30,000 Lockheed unmanned aerial vehicles that will be patrolling U.S. airspace spying on citizens by the next decade. These are only a few examples of how the biggest victims of the United States military-industrial complex are American citizens themselves. Foreign nationals actually get much kinder treatment, when we're not killing them for oil or opium poppies, of course. And by the way, I know how you guys are placed under microscopes in operational theaters overseas. I also know about the record numbers of active duty uh, service members committing suicide. I just heard last week of a homeless vet with PTSD in New York who crawled into a dumpster and set himself on fire. Vet benefits are being cut back, and vets don't have access to the mental health services that they need after having to murder innocent people for oil. No wonder PTSD rates and suicide rates are so high, because soldiers are smart enough to realize that what they're being ordered to do is wrong, and they can't handle it. Veterans comprise only 10% of the U.S. population, but they account for 16% of the U.S. homeless population. Recently, the U.S. Air Force was caught throwing the remains of service members in landfills because they didn't want to pay for cremation. Again, this goes to show how the biggest victims of the U.S. military-industrial complex are Americans. Okay, And this is what he responded to me with. He responded with, he responded with, smooth, t okay, smooth terrorist, I thought making this into a video would be a good idea. However, I put any video responses I have onto my Facebook page because my friends on there love to see me debate someone. I don't have a fucking problem with that. You can put it anywhere you want. Put it in the fucking base and let the other soldiers look at it. And anyway, let me keep reading what he said. I, I don't mean to interrupt. During the relief effort, there were people taking shots at the military, and the relief workers during the relief efforts taking the weapons out of people's houses under normal circumstances would be unheard of. However, in the interest of public safety and the safety of the military, not to mention the owners of the weapons themselves, I can fully understand the weapons being confiscated. I can agree with your statement that foreigners are treated better than our own citizens, our president has basically opened the floodgates to allow these border jumpers into our country, which leads me to think that he does not give a damn about America and in no way has its interests at heart. While overseas, just because a soldier has rocks thrown at them, they cannot start thumping skulls. Again, the rules of engagement states the, that the escalation of force must be observed at all times. For example, a rock thrown cannot be answered with a gunshot or a thumped skull, no matter how bad I wanted to do that very thing while overseas myself, which, which tells me something about this guy. No matter how bad I wanted to do that very thing while overseas myself. Yes, CS gas has been used against our soldiers even though it is prohibited by weapons bans. However, these third world countries do not observe the bans as America does. This observance hinders us somewhat, and the pain ray you mentioned was said it would hurt the reputation of soldiers, so its use by the military was outsourced. But then again, they say it's all right for American prisoners, makes a person think. Also, the UAVs in our airspace is something new. I have been told that one of these can spy in your window at 30,000 feet and see what kind of cigarette you are smoking. This is an act of our president that wants total control. I hope you vote because November is coming, and this is my opinion, and, and this, in my opinion, is the most important election ever. It kills me to see how the vets are having a hard time when we get home. I joined for several reasons, and one of them was how my service would look on an application. I have learned it makes no difference to employers. A veteran might as well be in jail when it comes to putting military service on an application. Basically, an overview of how you make some points and how you might need to look beyond what is shown on the news for a more clear understanding. All right, take it easy and all my best to silent carnage. And yeah, yeah, I'm the one who needs to look beyond what's on what's on the news, Mr. Ron Paul guy, who, who's talking about border jumpers and shit. Yeah, you haven't been watching a ton of Fox News. And and look, 
I'm going to keep on reading our exchange that we had, but I want you guys to remember this. I want you guys to file this away for later, okay? Remember this. I joined for several reasons, and one of them was how my service would look on an application. I have learned it makes no difference to employers, okay? Just remember that. Just file that away. Just remember it, okay? That's all I'm asking. Now let me give you my reply back to him. My reply back to him was... My reply was, so it's okay to confiscate firearms for public safety and the safety of the troops that were breaking into people's homes and forcing them to evacuate against their will, leaving their property undefended against looters. It's funny to hear that kind of talk from a guy who hates President Obama, because Obama talks about disarming the American people in the interest of public safety all the time. The Constitution doesn't go out the window when there's a hurricane, bro. Every one of the soldiers who participated in that quote-unquote relief effort violated their oath to the Constitution, and the only thing they did was relieve Americans of their rights. If you ask me, it's a black eye on the military's reputation that you'll never recover from. If you don't believe in freedom, then what the fuck are you even fighting for in the first place? What are you even defending? But clearly what this guy's fighting for is, is his resume, because he pretty much already admitted that. Now let me get uh, let me get his reply. Let me get the reply that he gave me. He says, Smooth terrorist. It was an unfortunate thing to have people leave their homes and possessions at the time of the relief effort. The military did not know which homes were safe to live in after the hurricane and the collection of firearms even though it did leave some homes undefended it was indeed for the safety of civilians the military and local police force at that time were were coordinating against the looters in other words against the citizens i am against our current president and everything he stands for he wants to strip us of our right to have firearms and basically the entire constitution as a whole he even said in our interview that our forefathers created a document that did, that did not allow the changes he wanted to enact like he wanted in the first place. That document was the Constitution of the United States of America. I understand our rights as Americans do not go out the window on account of a hurricane or other natural disaster, but sometimes we do the best we can to protect as many as we can. I'm sure the collecting of firearms stopped a lot more people from looting than if we had not, or there would have been more murders. I have spent 10 years in the military. I love America. I believe in the good Lord. What am I defending? Your right to get on your computer and voice your thoughts. I am 41 years old, and I look back at my time served for my country as some of the hardest and happiest times of my life. Until you have walked on foreign soil, willing to sacrifice everything you are, there is no way of knowing what it feels like to walk the street of America and know you are free. Ask for the rights that you have that I, oh, or excuse me, ask for the rights you have that I and thousands of soldiers just like me are defending. You are more than welcome. Now, so this guy defended my rights to get on my computer and, and say what I want to say. Despite the fact that it's Google and the fucking Pentagon that are trying to censor my right to say what I want to say. That, that's very fucking interesting. That, that's fascinating. And I love how he says you're welcome for defending, uh, you, you know. Look, you don't get to say you're welcome, asshole. Because I fucking thank you. And, you know, I didn't want this video to become a drama video. I try not to do those anymore. But that fucking shit pisses me off. I'm not in the least bit grateful for your fucking service, pal. Not in the least. I, I, I think, if anything, you were only serving yourself. You admitted that, the, you, you know, the, your reason for joining was how good it would look on a job application. Look, this... You know, you're not fucking Aldi Murphy. You, you, you weren't, uh, 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 you, you know... You're not a member of the greatest generation or anything, and you know we can make arguments all day about whether World War II was a just war or not. But look, don't think I don't fucking know what your experience was really like. 
granted, you probably saw some things that you didn't want to see. Maybe you've got a little bit of PTSD, whatever. But the point is, you know, you guys have it better than some citizens do these days. You know, I'm, I'm sick of this fucking attitude by servicemen that, that, like, oh, we have it so tough and we sacrifice so much. We lay the greatest fucking sacrifice for everybody's freedom. You know, fuck you. Try going without health insurance for a while. Try going fucking hungry for a while. But you won't, because you got a fat military pension, and you got the best fucking government welfare-ass insurance in the fucking world. So you're going to say... And, 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 like, I know what you're fucking doing. I, like, I have enough friends in the military to know what really goes on. I know you guys are fucking sitting around in hog heaven, and you've got it fucking easy most of the time. Now, granted, there's a few people who take a combat MOS and actually see fucking action. And, and, and those are the people who end up becoming the Adam Kokeshes, who, who uh, don't wave the flag. Those are the people who end up being opposed to the military-industrial complex, not people like you. I can tell right away that you haven't seen any really fucking gnarly action because of the way you're talking. I can tell you fucking have it. And you want me to thank you for my fucking freedom? What, you expect me to believe that, that Saddam Hussein would be marching the Republican Guard down fucking Bourbon Street right now, locking me up, forcing me to fucking speak Arabic? You expect me to believe that you're fucking fighting for my freedom? Bullshit. If anything, you're taking my fucking freedom away. You know, um, well, this, this was quite a video. Um, um, by the way, you know, I'm, I'm going to send this guy a link to this video, so we're probably going to see him in the comments, and maybe this, this debate can continue. But, you know, you know, it disgusts me that you want me to thank you. You want me to thank you for, you should fucking thank me, I'm the one serving your fucking ass. Because I have to fucking work and pay taxes so that you can sit around doing whatever the fuck you want. If, 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 I can only think of two. I can only think of two soldiers who have actually sacrificed, made personal sacrifices for my freedom. And that's Bradley Manning and Timothy fucking McVeigh. Those are the only two. Those are the only two soldiers that sacrificed their happiness and well-being for my fucking liberties and my freedoms. You haven't done shit. You fucking served for yourself. You served for money. You're a mercenary. You're a thug. You're welcome. I'm, uh, no, I'm not fucking welcome because I didn't thank you and I'm not gonna fucking thank you. This has been The Smooth Terrorist, and if you enjoyed this video, then download it, re-upload it, mirror it, parody it, make it your own, because the troops at Google cannot censor me unless you let them. Keep it smooth.